Marine Lord versus Poppy Paw, a BO5 that goes the distance. Exactly. Keeping this last series exciting. And Marine Lord is not taking water lightly. Six villagers moving across. And I see a big pink blob as well coming from Puppy Paw. But if my uh, counting seems to be true, I only see five there for Puppy and not going to be the greatest situation. Let me just do my count and vote. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, two. I'm not going to do that. I don't know why anyone ever thought that was an efficient way of counting. I mean, the problem that you have here is you know, this could turn into like a villager clash, but it doesn't really need to for Poppy Paw. If these villagers get the dock up and he walks away, like a fishing boat out will just win this for him. That's the thing that matters. And he even has a head start getting towards the dock location. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, Circling it's... back around and villagers for Marine Lord fast building a barracks, which will actually allow Puppy to get that dock up, but we'll have to start dealing with some spears sure to be queued up here in just a second. This could actually just break Puppy Pool because by the time the dock's complete, you've probably got two spears added in. You can get a fishing boat out, sure, but like if you micro this correctly, I think it gets torched Ooh. down and Puppy Pool with the clutch play, he'll get the walls up just in time. Needs to get another wall up on the opposite side. Too slow, too slow. Not quite there quick enough. But the dock has <laughs> finished, just how you said. Outpost being built and shivs have been pulled. Marine Lord hasn't invested in the water at all yet. The Spearman is there to help as well. Puppy Paul backing on away with his villagers. This outpost should end up going up. Scout gone as well. Scout I mean, Scout goes down. This is just a back and forth force, a twist of each other's arms. Each player forced to react to the other. You saw Puppy Ball was content to leave. The moment the outpost gets built, he's forced to fight. And now these spears can chase him all the way back to base. This outpost now also gives Marine Lord a way of burning down that dock with no threat to his forces. Yep, just absolutely able to full deny the fishing now. Not even going to use his vills to burn down the dock. Just wants to go ahead, start gathering up that wood. He has not been on wood too heavily yet. Uh, he's still on stragglers at home, I believe, but hasn't been able to drop a dock of his own because he needs spears and he needs uh, needed that barracks as well and outpost. Yeah, and you saw what Puck Paul's doing there, like the fishing boats. Like, they're tickled right now, but... You'll reach a point where Marine Lord can just garrison five spearmen and stop you from ever dropping off. So if Puppy Paw can't get out and get a new dock down, any investment he makes on fishing here becomes worthless. Yeah, and you saw those villagers pull little juke move, went on in and then pulled right on back. He, Puppy Paw is starting to kind of build up these fishing boats a little bit more, has gotten over to that corner and denied the dock that was attempting to be put down. But... With, uh, I think it's five or f maybe even four villagers or spearmen or whatever in an outpost. I believe it two shots a fishing boat. It might be five in there. Is Puppy Poor about to outpost rush Marine Lord's base? No, I think he's just going wide. Okay, thank God. He was he was beelining for it. I was a bit worried there. So he's just going wide. He's going to try to get a dock on the south side. This isn't the worst idea because, you know, Marine Lord is probably going to idle himself a lot in this area. I think in an ideal world, Puppy Poor is content if Marine Lord uses the villages to torch, but we can see that Marine Lord is not even phased by what's happening here. Yeah, one thing though, Marine Lord loses one vill. All the rest of those vills seem to be at less than half health. That dock's gonna be hard to go up with three fishing boats there just ready and waiting. So Puppy Paul using this micro to exceptionally well, just because Marine Lord hasn't invested in the water at all yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back online. Fishing boat is going to go down, but the amount of time that he's delayed this dock going up is, is truly frustrating for Marine Lord. Like, he's floating so much wood, and yet he still has no way of using it. Exactly, and with that extra dock going up, I think Marine Lord <laughs> has one going down right next to it. That villager half health for Marine Lord, if Puppy Paul spots it, could just pull those shivs and a fishing boat and deny that dock as well. Peace. Get out of here. He has to move fast as well because the fishing boat will be quicker. Luckily for him, that was interesting in dropping off food instead of dropping oh. off scalps. And but during that time, Marine Lord snuck up the dock in the north side, distracted Puppy Paw for just a bit. Even still, five fishing boats are already out and will be able to reposition for Puppy when the north dock gets burnt. Yeah, and you know, you'd think like these early clashes the West played out, villagers killed, whatever, out of time, that it would favor Marine Lord. But we have to remember like two villagers have died each side. And Marine Lord also had to build outposts as well as a lumber camp out here to kind of justify this. So 
I don't feel bad about Puppy Paul's position right now. I actually think he's pretty happy where he's at. Yeah, not even to mention uh, he technically is 31 eco compared to the 24 because those fishing boats are now actually working instead of being that uh, yeah. kind of two-pronged attack. Speaking of attacks, Marine Lord is going to direct his attention elsewhere, heading towards Puppy Paw's base. Good reason. All of his eco is located in one location. Land eco, that is. And if you check those wood lines, it's not exactly a, a safe haven for the deli. No, not by any means. Puppy Paw, though, does have enough food to start his age up. You already saw that Marine Lord has started up his as well. Trying to find a spot to... Uh... I'm not sure what these fishing boats are. Oh, is that the but nearest? The, the that is the fishing. nearest yeah. shoreline fish because of the docks and the wall. Okay. Yeah, because so like they are shoreline fishing. So tournament rules say you can't intentionally delete shoreline fish by placing docks. They didn't intentionally do it. It's just they dropped their right. docks next to each other as well as walls. That's why there's just no yeah. shoreline fish in that corner. And as those fishing boats start to pile on up, Marine Lord just going to have to micro those fishing ships back if he wants those to stay alive and actually drop off the hard work they've been utilizing. And one goes down. Well, so does the lumber camps. So that forces a great migration from Poppy Pool. 15 villagers just had to idle up for about 20 seconds there, moving the other side of the base. We have to remember that this is a no mill play, so the Delhi don't actually have wheelbarrow. So that took a long time shifting to the other side of your base, and you still have the same issue over here. Right? You're walling the wrong side. There we go. He's going to fix it because Marine Lord can just wrap around and still be a nuisance. Yeah. Big thing for Puppy Paul. Marine Lord has that feudal age timing, has that military ship in queue already. So those fishing boats, they're going to have to fully turn and try to, I, I think there's eight of them, try to all take down that archer ship as fast as possible. <laughs> but we've seen how effective those fishing boats are in trying to take down even fishing boats from the other side. And notice that detail from Poppy Poor at home. Like, he didn't just wall the sides, he fully walled. The reason is that when you play fishing maps like this, you don't have any villagers under the TC, which means that those spearmen could have actually dove under TC range and not died for it. So just a great read there by Poppy Poor. Otherwise, this entire eco would either be dying or idling again. Yeah, Marine Lord, though, bringing up a villager to outpost the wood line. Low health fishing ship, able to stay alive. Good micro by Puppy Paul, dodging down that arrow ship. Zig An arrow ship for him, just trying to push back the other one. Yeah, when in doubt, just zig and zag. I think he was even still doing it after the fact because he was worried about that final flurry. Now, this is just such a scrappy, messy affair. One that Puppy Paul is better off for, right? Like, he's getting deep war fish. Marine Lord is not. And because he was busy harassing Eco instead of trading with his archer ship, he's at risk of just losing his. Yeah, what I'm really scared for Puppy, though, is if he gets denied on wood any longer, that's going to be the big problem. Fishing bi boat pull to heal up the archer ship, and the spearmen have <laughs> broken through that wall and are able to deny the wood, and Puppy's still sending more vills to the wood. He's going to lose vills for nothing. Attack speed Thought is on them as well. Away. They're definitely going down before he can react quick enough. Puppy Paul's just distracted on the water side, right? Because the exchange is never ending there. Once again, a great migration. A bunch of idle time coming in. Puppy Paul is now going for the northern wood line. He's not, now they're going to probably lose another lumber camp. That's just 100 wood burnt. And because he went northern line, with the meta now here, look how quick the transition is from Marine Lord. Yeah, not only that, demo ship pops out for Marine Lord. All the fishing has been idled for quite some time by Puppy Paul. Spears arrive at that next wood line. He does have an archer to defend it, but there's five spears there, and they're going to be taking a lot of time before they get cleared on up. I just love the meta running da up and down the line. Just the drums of death reminding the villagers they will die today. Whew. This must be textiles though, right? Like, I don't think these villagers have been dying quick enough for the spears, so I, I think Puppy Paw did stop off for textiles to minimize casualties. Yeah. Even still though, there are a lot of vills that have gone down. We see the destroyed uh, worker kills 11 to three in favor of Marine Lord. It's insane. Poppy Paul, like he still does have the potential on the fishing side, but now Marine Lord, he can pivot that, that eco device. Wait, <laughs> yeah, there's vills. <laughs> and Marine Lord baits him in. It's just more idle time. You can't kill this unit quick enough. 190 HP. Insane. I think a Ville from Marine Lord was jumping up, wanted to have a part of the fight as well into the mix, but pulled that shiv out, got sniped down by the archer. Puppy Paul, though, does not have the archer number here, does not have the numbers that he needs to be able to defend this up. 
And if you were being murdered by Spears, it's even easier for archers to kill you here. Like, Puppy Porn... Now, he has one upside because of this archer transition. If he goes to the Western Woodline again, he can wall himself in and doesn't have to worry about a torch for you. But I'm starting to feel like heavy damage may have already been done, right? Like, think about what's been happening on this eco side in the pond. He's got all these fishing boats, but half the time they're not even fishing. They're just attacking. Yep, and the demo ship already prepped for when the Springle ship pops out and immediately goes down, blows it up resources thrown down the drain woodline trying to be grabbed and uh, this is one of those if you're trying to grab woodlines in front of archers that are already there that's um, it that's gg i was about to say it <laughs> yeah, that scout tanking and the meta still with so much health was the end of the road poppy poor despite his early approach in this series cannot win out marine lord just one step ahead continues through in the upper bracket but poppy poor fans do not cry. Do not feel despair. He still has an opportunity down in the redemption. Absolutely. What a great, great series to end that game in this uh, day on. We will have action packed next week. But for now, that best of five. What an unbelievable showing from both sides. Yeah, it's like, you know, it, it was hard to follow up the BCB one. And, you know, this one at times may not have been as flashy, but I think the small differences, the the ideology, uh, ideological clashes, right? The approaches, things like, that, especially that game on Rocky Canyon come to mind. We've seen some very different approaches to what we've seen so far in Gold League round two. And I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen if these two potentially clash further down the line. I mean, what we've seen today from Puppy Paul, I think he could easily make it. All right, I could see him in loser semifinals, loser finals at least. Uh, the question mark is like who he's going to be clashing with in that journey because I'm just checking the brackets right now. If I'm not mistaken... Wait, no, yeah, sorry. It'd be losers... Which one am I looking for here? My brain. Uh, it's another brother matchup for Puppy and Wham. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, man, oh. dude. Like, they never, ever don't have to kill each other in these tournaments, right? I mean, it's the curse of being some of the best, right? You're probably going to get deep enough that you have to take each other out. The same thing happens with Vortex and Lucifron. We see it so often, and I know they hate to do it, hate to knock the other brother out, especially when it comes to the game decider, and it's not just knocking them down to the yeah. loser's bracket. And that's exactly what this next brother matchup will be. So that definitely has some stuff on the line, and... Andy, thank you for the gifted subs coming in as our games have concluded today and all the other subs that have come out. We do appreciate all the support to it. And, uh, you know, Pesty, everyone else can't complain about when more of those subs come on through. Yeah, you guys are absolutely amazing. Week after week, the support has been incredible. I know like this tournament began uh, with some... Some painful messages need to be said, but the way you guys have turned up each week, the way you guys are being reinvigorated in your feelings about the, the competitive scene, right? More people turning up, I think, compared to like the last time we ran is impressive. Keep it up. Keep turning up. Keep giving the love out and spreading the love, right? We want to make this community bigger. I think we can. Like We've got a solid game to build on here and uh, glad to see it resurging. Even seeing big streamers involved. And you know, just to your point quickly, Dab, around like the, the brothers, like, it's heartbreaking, but it's beautiful as well. Like, I think we saw a comment from Crackety where it's like, I wish we had more interbrother relationships here. It, it Truly, guys, it, you, you will see. Like, I still remember in Dota 2, TI, um, Sumail and Yawa, they're brothers, and they go up against each other in an elimination series. And at the end, you just see the message, good luck, bro. And it's like, it it melts your heart, right? <laughs> Because, like, you you know, like, it's even when you haven't got direct brothers, like, we know that so much of this community is intertwined and they have a lot of respect for each other. Like, I've heard stories where, you know, people, like, they love Mr. so much as an example. I think he's one of the ones we go to. They almost oh, feel yeah. bad to eliminate him. Linux the same. So many people love him that it, you know you have to beat him. And you feel good that you beat him. But on the flip side, part of your heart breaks.